It has been a season where only tenths of a point separated the cores. The Blue Devils came to this championship working on an undefeated season. But they know well Santa Clara came into championship week last year undefeated, only to be upset in the prelims and subsequently lose the championship to the Garfield Cadets by a mere tenth of a point. Any one of seven or eight cores in this contest is capable of mounting a serious challenge for the title of world champion. And the top 12 has never been so hotly contested. Tonight, in order of appearance, we'll see the Blue Devils, the Santa Clara Vanguard, the Cavaliers, the Madison Scouts, and the Garfield Cadets. The year is 1988. The Blue Devils, as far as they know, are about to win their seventh DCI championship, and an undefeated one at that. Here comes the medalist scores. In third place, and a score of 96.3, 96 96.3, the Blue Devils. Wait, what? 97.5, the Okay, so clearly Blue Devils lost, not only blowing their undefeated season, but also taking third in the process. But why is this loss such a big deal? They already mentioned that Vanguard had also blown their season-long lead on finals night the previous year, so who's to say it can't happen twice? Well, before we get into that, let's talk about slotting. If you've ever heard your director talk about getting a good seed or having a good or bad draw, you've heard about slotting. But what is it? Throughout the 70s, performance order was usually decided by holding a random draw. You would select the order and then perform in that order. A lot of drum corps hated this. But why? Well, there was a drawback to the random draw, and that was going on first. The core slotted to go on first usually got scored so poorly that this first performance slot was typically referred to as the sacrifice core. These performance slots constantly had cores getting their scores sacrificed and the first performance slot was deemed the worst possible draw you could get. This type of thought when talking about slotting is still floating around to this day. Okay, so what? The tick system is gone and they no longer do random draws, right? So what does this have to do with the Blue Devils loss? Well, it all has to do with the way that finals in 1988 were ran. Now, the Blue Devils aren't accustomed to going on first here. Uh, there's a reason why that happened, Michael. <laughs> it's all a result of a new scoring system. It's a way they're choosing the uh, people that go on, essentially, although the jury's still out on it. It's a blind draw. The only thing they know is that they're in the top 12, and the top five, they know they're in the top five, but they don't know where. And neither do we. So <laughs> what happened? They did the draw. It's created a little bit of controversy, and the question for DCI Executive Director Don Pessioni, why did you do it? Coming into this show, we have six, seven, or eight cores under the right conditions that could win. And I think those drum cores know it. And without the preliminary scores, they have no idea of what's going to happen and what they have to do to be the best. And I think that's going to charge the kids up. I hope it charges everybody up. So as you just heard, neither the audience nor the cores themselves knew the scores from semis. But the draw did give them some hints. First off, the audience knew who was in 6th place through 12th place, and they knew who was in 1st place through 5th place. DCI had the draw for 1 through 5 and for 6 through 12. That order ended up being 1st on Velvet Knights, Suncoast Sound, Phantom Regiment, Spirit of Atlanta, Sky Riders, Star of Indiana, and the Blue Coats. For the top 5, the order was 1st on Blue Devils, Santa Clara Vanguard, Cavaliers, the Madison Scouts, 
and the Garfield Cadets. This is what sparks the debate about the 1988 Finals. And the debate is less over how did the Blue Devils lose and more of how did the Madison Scouts win. See, if you're aware, the Madison Scouts had not been having the greatest season. The Blue Devils beat the Madison Scouts at every event they met at, which happened five times, and the Blue Devils' closest rival at the time was Santa Clara Vanguard. Santa Clara Vanguard also never once lost to Madison. They beat them at every show they had along with the Blue Devils and actually came in first set shows against Madison five times in Cincinnati, Ohio, Severville, Tennessee, Birmingham, Alabama, not once but twice in one day, and Tulsa, Oklahoma. In addition to losing to the two California Corps, Madison Scouts had also been losing to Phantom Regiment nearly the whole season long. That's not to say that the Madison Scouts were having the worst season imaginable. They were actually doing pretty well, competing against the Velvet Knights consistently towards the end of the season and getting first at plenty of the shows. However, they were still nowhere near where the Santa Clara Vanguard and the Blue Devils were. That is until semifinals. At semifinals, the Madison Scouts actually came in first place with the Blue Devils in second and the Santa Clara Vanguard in third, but nobody would know that until the next night. Where many of the other cores were consistently outperforming Madison, even all the way up to finals, Madison had two key points that helped them win. That was their killer visual program on finals night, and their GE, which could all be summed up to Malaguena being the best thing on the field in 1988. Besides Malaguena, the Madison Scouts actually had a little help from the second and third place scores for leading them to their win. You see, this is the year that DCI decided to change the way that they scored shows. They added a general effect caption and a performance caption. Quite similar to what we have now, but there were some key differences that made this a year for Madison Scouts to win. Nowadays, you see drum cores scored a certain way. First you have general effect, typically with two general effect judges, visual proficiency, visual analysis, color guard, music with brass, analysis, and percussion captions, and if we zoom out, you can see, like on all good recaps, the Blue Devils are in first place. Now that we have seen the scores and the way that they were scored, what does this have to do with the placings of the top three medalists from that year? Beginning with the Blue Devils, they notably had a particularly dirty run that night, scoring a second in brass in general effect, third in percussion, and sixth in visual. In performance, they scored first in brass, fifth in percussion, and fourth in visuals. As for Vanguard, for general effect, they scored third in brass, first in percussion, and first in visual. For their performance captions, they scored fifth in brass, second in percussion, and third in visual, leading them to get a 96.9 in second place. And last, we have the Madison Scouts, who in general effect scored first in brass, second in percussion, second in visual, third in brass for performance, third in percussion, and first in visual, leaving them with a score of 97.1 and winning the 1988 DCI World Championships. So what's so debated about this? We've seen the scores, and Madison clearly outperformed both Vanguard and Blue Devils that year. But the question really is, did their time slot of that night lead them to win the entire finals night, or was it a show that truly deserved first place? Throughout my research for this video, I found that many agreed with the placement of Madison Scouts in 1988, myself being among them. However, there are the naysayers. The majority of those naysayers actually believe that Vanguard should have won the World Championships that year, citing that their general effect scores were actually outperforming what Madison Scouts did, especially considering that in total for general effect, the Madison Scouts took first. However, their performance captions are what suffered. 
and many claim that Vanguard's early time slot is what led them to have suffering performance scores. Another even crazier theory that some believe is that Madison Scounce was actually cheating during the draw, citing this moment where a man was actually pointed to select a specific card leading to Madison Scounce's perfect draw. Regardless whether Madison truly cheated to get the draw they did, the fact that they were a 5th place core, ending in 1st place in finals, leads so many to believe that slotting still affects placement. With many of them pointing to the fact that Blue Devil scores first constantly and believe that it only is because of the performance order that they go on. Many of them try to push for randomized draws at not just finals but at every show, believing that true equality in the competition can only be solved by random draws. Regardless of any debate surrounding the 1988 DCI Finals, only one fact is clear. The Madison Scouts created a historical drum corps show that will always be remembered. What do you think? Do you think that the Blue Devils getting a 5th place draw led them to get a 3rd place finish in DCI Finals? Do you think that Madison Scouts should have won? Do you think that all shows should have a randomized performance order? Let me know in the comments, and I hope you enjoyed the video.